waiting for the boss lady. Let's go talk to Daisy. Maybe she'll grant us an interview. And excuse the handheld. She doesn't like the tripod at all. Daisy dog. Daisy. I got an email from somebody wondering if you're alive and well. Would you like to talk to the camera? Hmm? Would you like to be in the video? Huh? What do you think, girl? Say something. Hello? Hello, puppy. Have you got anything to say at all? Huh? Yeah? No? Alright. Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, and today I'm going to work on making tools more available to me. I would imagine you've uh, experienced that yourself. That you got something you could use, but it's stored away and you don't want to go dig it out so you find some other way to do whatever it is or or you just pass it up. Well I've got this uh, really cheap sheet metal break but it does bend sheet metal and it'll you know it'll do an accurate job of it if you set it up right. The only problem is it's leaning against the wall behind some things here so I don't use it every chance I get. I thought, well, if I mount it on the front of my workbench and hinge it so that I can move it down out of the way when I'm not using it, then I expect I could, you know, be prone to using the thing a little bit more often. So this will take, uh, I guess, at least one and a half sets of hinges, if not two, and I'll show you where I'm going to put it. All right, I'm going to put the little booger right here. Now, when I was planning out the job I was inside and I was thinking that there was a two before hanging over here like there is on the old parts of the workbench and so I had to kind of redo my plan when I got out here but still I can put a hinge here and here and lower the little booger down all right and it won't be up here terribly in my way it might be in my way a little bit sort of getting up to the workbench I think I can live with that and this guy right uh, right there, that's the, the object of today's job. I'm going to take him, and he's mounted on a 2x6 right now. I'm going to mount the 2x6 on the workbench and set it up so that I can get at it to use it anytime I want to. And I, I don't know if you guys were watching. I, I'm sure you all watch Randy Richard in the shop, and he just, you know, just very skipped disaster there with a big fire, you know, around in his place. And glad to see that he's back home. You know, those poor folks in California hadn't hardly got a chance. They got earthquakes, they got floods, they got droughts, they got mudslides, they got forest fires. You know, they just hadn't got a chance out there. If it's not doing one of those things, it's doing one or two of the others. All right, let's, uh, let me see strip that stuff off of that tube of six and we'll get on with the rest of this. Now I set this thing up with these little latches here to hold the, the piece that goes on here when I'm not using it. And I think that I'll be able to continue on with that once I get uh, once I get it mounted there. I'll have to take these little latches off for this piece of metal to come out of there. So once I get the little latches off, then I can take this piece of metal out of there. This is this edge is on an angle, and you put it right up here, and you know pull the little bend up toward it, leaving of course enough space for the metal to to be inside there. I'm going to try to set it just back here out of the way. Now I'm going to take this little guy off the tube of six, so I don't have to worry about that. And we'll try to get it mounted on here in some reasonable manner. I'm just using the redneck hinge alignment method, which may or may not be any good. I uh, I went this this Sunday for the for the 22 fun shoot, and it was fun. And uh, I come to find out that Mr. Bozo likes to go for that too. I had on. Friday night I had prepared all of my firearms, you know, by cleaning them and, and I took and thought I had loaded all the magazines and all that sort of thing and I was absolutely ready for the for the job. 
Well, Mr. Brozo was helping me, and there was one magazine that didn't have but two rounds in it. And Mr. Bozo made sure I picked that one up when I got up to shoot. And he made sure I put that one in the gun. And on top of that, that, that bugger, he let me go ahead and shoot with it. I got up to shoot, and I, there's these, all the targets are like squares and stop signs and lollipops and bowling pin. And I got the, I looked at it, I thought, 15 yards, I can't miss. This is going to be easy. Well, you know what they say about the best laid plans and all that sort of thing. It didn't turn out as planned. After I shot the two rounds, I thought, I've got a bad round. I've got a dud. The 22s have lots of duds. So I stopped, reached up, pulled the slide, and dad burned it. The slide's already open. So then I thought, well, this must be the first ever jam for this Smith & Wesson. And that wasn't so either. It turns out that uh, <laughs> just I only had two rounds of the magazine. I only got to shoot four times there, and I only won one time. One time I got beat by a little old lady, or school teacher, retired lady school teacher. So, you know, of course it ain't fair having to compete with women there. They're usually a lot better at this stuff. All right, now, so I gotta put screws up through there. I've put all the big screws that I had in here. So I'm one short on each hinge, and I've gotta find another big screw or, or something. But anyway, I've got to fasten these uh, these hinges on this board sooner or later. And I don't need very... very much of a hole there because they're short. They don't need to be real long. They just need to be nice and fat and ready to hold things together. I'll come up under here and <clears throat> and get these guys in really tight. And there we are. That's tight. Gonna hold it. <clears throat> this will swing down out of the way. And I believe I've got everything in the wrong, I mean in the wrong, probably they are in the wrong places. I've got everything located so that the bolts coming through the top won't get in the way. Uh, I would suppose that what I'm going to have to do to hold this up when I'm working is I'm going to have to drill a hole in a couple of places and put a pin through the the tube of six there, or tube of four, whatever it is, to hold it good and steady. So that'll that'll be the next the next step after I get these last screws located and put in. Uh, I have to see what size metal I've got so I'll know what size hole to drill in here, you know? As you might have expected, this guy's going to play a role in here somewhere, right? Got to cut me a tough piece of rod to go up under that, uh, up under that 2 to 6 to hold everything steady. I did have some old bolts this size. There you go. See that stupid thing? Blade jumped off. You take an apple, I put it back together. Well, now, now I it gets kind of tight up under there because I want to put one of these on each side like that. And I can't drill that close to this board, so I'll have to mark them and then take this board off of here and do the drilling and then put it back on. So I think that what I'll do is I'll just put it up there and whack it with a hammer so it leaves a nice impression. Or I could put this in the lathe and make a little point on it and set it up there and make an even nicer impression. I think that's what I'll do. We'll just cut a little point on it.
that's sharp enough to make a dent that a drill bit will set into especially in something soft like wood so I think I'll just put a little bit on on the, the other pin just enough like I say to make it slide and hold easy and then we'll get to marking and drilling it looks like those scotch rod wheels that I got is the option do a good job of deep burning. I think they're going to be worth the money. I need to get some of a, of a much smoother grip, something down at almost, say, in the polishing range. I don't know which one, that, which wheel that would be, though. I'm going to look into it. All right, I'm just going to pick a couple of spots at random and jam this thing up there and hammer it so that it will make uh, a dent, and then we'll take it all apart and get a a 5 8 drill bit and drill a hole. That made a nice dent. Not really where I wanted the thing to work out, but it's there. Alright, here we go right here. Hopefully that's all just right. I'll uh, take your things apart now and we'll see what we got. Well I took a break for uh, for lunch there and went in and the State Department lost a lawsuit and now it's legal to print plastic guns and and the media are going nuts over it and I think the whole thing's silly because when you fire a cartridge there's great amounts of heat generated right along with a great amount of pressure I don't see a plastic gun being good for more than, you know, one or two rounds, and then that sucker is going to be too melted and too soft. I don't think it's a big threat. <clears throat> but what the public doesn't know is what they base their perceptions on, and they know very little about firearms, so, you know, they listen to the alarmists. <laughs> find this thing and wind up eating lunch but I forgot where I put it I don't use it a lot but when I when I need a nice big drill this guy comes in handy it doesn't have to be well made you know to be used just once in a while every few months or every couple of years it'll do the job about to go for it. Now let's see what happens. That's pretty tight. <clears throat> I think that'll probably do the job. Let's see if I can loosen it a little bit up on the top. Gotta go easy on that. I got a wire back there. So you don't want to cut into a wire. That would be a disaster. I think it's gonna work. I just got to make sure I keep that wire out of the way. That worries me. <clears throat> I 
things change with progress and it's not always a good thing I remember when I was a young guy there was a, a language bit uh, there if you uh, if you dropped an f-bomb around a lady or just general woman not knowing whether she's a lady or not two or three guys would jump up and I volunteer to rearrange your anatomy now we fast forward to 2018 and it's the young women that are using the f-bombs uh, I don't think that's much of an improvement all right I'm going to drill the other hole just like that. I did this one same thing nothing to see all right now I can just put a piece of metal in here and bend her however I want with the pins to hold it up and when I get through with it I can take this little piece of metal stash them under here put the little clamps back on it let it swing down and of course I'll have to take these off so they're not in the way but uh, I had them off there anyway and what got me into doing this was uh, when I put the power lift on the mill head there uh, I had a open spot on the dirty side of the mill I'll show you what I did there like I say I had an open spot there on the dirty side of the mill and you know chips and stuff can get up there in the ears so I made myself a little cover that slides right on there keeps the chips out I did that just as soon as I got through with with a video of making the thing and I may make a little cover for the back side of it too I'm not sure but it's bent on the end so that it sort of spring loads itself to stay on there and if it ever doesn't well I'll put a magnet in there and hold it I know a magnet will hold it good that's the reason I just got to thinking about setting the uh, the little sheet metal brick where I could use it all right after the video here I'll probably cut a little piece of metal and make a cover for the other side of that uh, gearbox oh I don't think it really needs it being away from where all the chips are flying but I'll probably do it anyway just for the heck of it and this makes it possible I got another thing that's bothered me a lot you know every time they they come to some guy and he's got more than one gun and more than 10 rounds of ammo they get really upset at least the media does and and I, I guess maybe the general public that have no uh, actual experience with firearms what I've, I've got to figure out here what difference does it make if I have purchased say 40 firearms or 400 firearms if I legally purchased them what difference does that make how many I've got don't say well just because or well, nobody needs that many or or some dumb answer like that because there's people that collect golf balls and they've got thousands of different brands of golf balls and they can't use them all at one time and in fact they don't need them there's people that collect baseball caps they've got you know hundreds of maybe even thousands of baseball caps they don't need those but they're not hurting nothing huh so what is the thing that's such a big deal what's wrong with a guy that owns say 400 legally purchased guns what would be the difference he can't shoot but one at a time well I know you see the movies where you know Rambo and Arnold Schwarzenegger out there a machine gun in each hand firing away but that's in the movies no no real live person can do that you can't really handle but one at a time I, I watched a lot of these uh, westerns hop along Cassidy he's one of the worst he shoots from the waist and he, he does it like that when he shoots pushes the gun he couldn't hit the side of a barn like that but that's Hollywood you got to remember when you see it in the movies it ain't real all right let's see if Bubba's in around somewhere well there it is deeply stored away that uh, this may be in the way more than I had anticipated and then again maybe not I think really if I just take and throw an old towel over it I won't it won't get dirty touching it or anything so we're going to try it like this for a while all right back to looking for Bubba Bubba and Coot and Earl got caught rusting cattle in Texas so folks there decided to hang them from a tree on the bank of the Rio Grande River 
and afterwards they can cut them down let them float away you know so they won't be sticking the place up and all so they hang Earl he's so slippery he just steps out of the noose and swims away you know so the next they string up Cooter he's, he's so slippery too he slips out of the noose and swims away you know so they drag Bubba up to the tree and Bubba says hey y'all tighten up that noose I can't swim well that's all folks uh, y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber leave a comment if you got something to say and above all remember keep on keeping on bye now